Meets the Phantom continues, starring Gene Simons and Peter Chris. I've invited many of my famous foolish friends to be there with me. The event will be large, so don't delay to make your plans for a frightening good time on Halloween night, Wednesday, October 31st, from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., for children under 14, escorted by their parents. Parents, warning signs that might indicate a child's drift towards Satanism include abrupt emotional changes, changes in school habits, rejection of parental values, unusual interest in books on Satanism, black magic, or witchcraft, obsession with rock music groups using satanic symbols or references, rejection of friends, preference for being alone, meditation, chanting, use of new vocabulary. The Detroit Recreation Department is sponsoring free Halloween parties at recreation centers in the city. Make this a safe Halloween. Call 224-1100 for information. You know what? This isn't... No. Jonathan, here. Jonathan, stand right here. Come here, honey. Come here. Jonathan, look. This is magic. Look for trick-or-treat time. Watch out there. You can make Halloween safe for all children in the Detroit area this year. <laughs> oh, you might ask. Well, have a party for your youngsters or call the Detroit Recreation Department at 224-1100 for the location of its free Halloween parties. Okay, time out, guys. This is serious business here. Watch the guy now. Let go of his hand. Just let him go. At 224-1100 for the Detroit area this year. Put your hands down, come on. Have a party for your youngsters or call the Detroit Direct Irrigation. Oh, sorry. I want to bite your finger. It's a Dracula game. Just set the clock. Just try your luck. If Dracula's cape opens, you have to put your finger in his mouth and press the lever. If he leaves a mark on your finger, you have to start over again. He didn't bite me. If you can sneak all the way around Dracula's house, you'll win the game. You're not supposed to bite people. It's a Dracula game. I want to bite your finger from Hasbro. Caution. Children should not attempt to carve carefully. Happy Halloween, everybody. I'm Gordy Falk. About eight years ago, I started carving pumpkins, and it got a little out of hand. And the first thing we have to do is get the top off. The pumpkin is a great, big, huge piece of God's creation, something that you could probably win the Peloponnesian Wars with. Now, you are doomed. Some people would rather slaughter a cow than take the insides out of a pumpkin. A nice stiff shaft, stick it in. <clears throat> it works a lot better than putting your hands inside. And you can see our hole is quite a bit bigger. An attractive face is one with curves. You don't need a bunch of teeth. Just stick it in, whoops. Now, what I like to do, you don't have to do this, is make a big, dumb hole. Every human being has eyebrows. Unless you're one of these high fashion gals who plucks them out, but we'll pretend that you're normal. We'll talk about eyebrows a little later. Eyebrows, the only thing we need now, eyebrows. And we'll put a cat in here. The easiest part is getting the hole in the bottom. You have a good chance of messing it up. It fits right in the hole, and that's a good time. This is an instrument. It cannot play music by itself. With practice and training by someone, beautiful music can be heard. Hi, I'm Lydney Burns. The same is true for your other natural talents, like running, nurturing, and using your psychic abilities. Your psychic abilities are a basic part of you. They're already within you. Hi, I'm Lydney Burns. Just like a coach or music teacher or guide, I'll help you discover your own natural psychic talents and use them. 
You use these talents every day without even thinking. With practice, you can develop and use them anytime and anywhere. <coughs> While you're stuck in a traffic jam, waiting at the doctor's office, before a test or interview, and speaking with your mother-in-law for the third time that day. Situate yourself so that your body's comfortable. You can be sitting or reclining and place your hands on the steering wheel of your car in that traffic jam and place your feet on the floor. If you put your hands on your body, hurt yourself and start all over again. See how calm you feel? Focus on your feet. Tighten your muscles in your toes and feet. Now tense your buttocks and abdomen. Tense your neck and your face. Feel your body. Listen to your breathing. Your psychic abilities are already there. I could kick myself. I knew I was right. I should have listened to myself. You've been listening to me from your brain. Now I want you to move. Release excessive energy. Relax your feet. Relax your legs, your upper torso, and I want you to put your hand and visualize it inside you and let it come right into your body and fill your body. And imagine yourself being completely filled inside your body. It's already inside of you, but I want you to be aware of it. Does it feel tight? Does it feel uncomfortable? Does it feel nauseous? What does it feel like to you? Does it feel warm? Does it feel open? Does it feel calm? What does it feel like to you? Can you feel the difference? If not, practice it again and again until you can feel the difference. So before we start, I want you to get a household object that you can place in the palm of your hand. A piece of lettuce, put your VCR on hold, get your object, and come on back. I want you to take your object now and put it in your chest, Touch it. Smell it if you can. Rub it against your face. Listen to it. Which part of you do you use the most? See how easily you do it now? Naked, 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 I can see what comes into your head. Let's try to do some clairvoyance together. Try doing this several times with different objects for practice. Imagine the inside of your forehead is a movie screen. Clear your mind so that your whole movie screen is empty and you're the only one in the theater. Physically tangible way of demonstrating clairvoyance. Solve crimes. It has been said that several governments have employed clairvoyant people to sit in a room thousands of miles away and use their clairvoyant abilities to read through sealed secret military dossiers from a rival government. Take a piece of paper and a pencil, glasses, sand dollar, scissors, pad of paper, and a glove. Make yourself familiar with them. Feel it inside you and around you. See how quickly you can do it already? Feel free to place your VCR on hold at the end of this segment. We have removed all of the objects except for one. Clear your mind and focus on the one object. How many of you guessed the glove? For those of us who are professional clairvoyants, we sometimes use a crystal ball in addition to the screen inside our heads for focus and clarity. Okay, let's see the object. If you don't have a crystal ball, you can use any translucent surface. 
Fill up a cup with water, anything that is not totally clear that will distract you, and gaze into the water. You can gaze until your eyes go unfocused and images or impressions come to mind. Call me now for your free tarot reading. Whether you dream, ball, or predict the future, you'll notice halos and emanations of light that come from the people's heads. <laughs> another way of knowing and looking at your friends. Now stare at my shoulder. Just let your eyes go out of focus. Keep staring until you see the color or colors. You may see separate colors. You may see them all together. You may not see a color at all. You may sense or just know the colors. If you do not see a color, it's certainly not a test of your psychic abilities. And let's focus on the outside edge of the fruit, just like you looked at my shoulder, and let your eyes go out of focus. Just stare at the edge of the fruit and see what colors you see or sense or know. Great. Place an open hand, palm facing you about six inches from your forehead. Close your eyes and see if you can sense the energy from your hand. Great. Now place a hand in front of the other person's focal center and sense the energy. Is it radiating out or withdrawing? Now let's put our hands on the pet Okay, wherever you want to put it, in any place you want to put it. That's why animals like to be petted so much. You're putting healing energy into them. Put your hands on the other person's body, wherever you, you want your hands to go. Remember, use your own psychic abilities to know where you want to put your hands. You can put it on the person's body, around the person's body, and if you're unsure, put your hands on the person's focal center and on the person's psychic center. Experiment with any position you want with your hands, and you can also use crystals. When people talked about a unique burger, Mr. Mike's listened. When people talked about a fish burger just a little bit different, Mr. Mike's listened. When people talked about a chicken burger, Mr. Mike's listened and heard it first. Mr. Mike's brought it to the people and they just ate it up. You are driven to a point of total distraction about business and money and goal and objective and that's why you can't keep a man because you don't concentrate on them. Okay, let's see the object. evening you're at a bar and you feel confused. That's the life of a medium. Remember, don't try this at home unless you have a trained medium who has already helped you get a control spirit in your planchette. So let's see what this particular spirit has to say to us. Oh, hello. My name is Casper. What's yours? So let's see what this spirit has to say to all of you. This looks like a baby factory. I am here. And I am pleased to talk with you. I have last lived in a body on Earth over 2,000 years ago. I am not any different than you, except that I no longer have a body. We do not exist. <laughs> Molly, you in danger, girl. You can talk to a child who can't speak yet, a pet. It certainly saves on phone bills. It's a great way of winning a trivial pursuit with people who may have suffered from strokes or are in comas. And remember, influence anyone against their will.
practice this exercise at home with another person, switch sender and receiver so you can experience yourself as both a sender and a receiver. Some people will be better senders. Others will be better receivers. Still others will be good at sending and receiving. See what you do. If you do this at home, separate the group in half and have one half silently decide which color they wish to set. So senders and receivers, let's get ready. Keep focusing. Are we ready? Let's tell them the color. Red. You can stop at any time. Your psychic abilities are very real and tangible parts of you. You know, we think, think, think the naked and naked. If we touch it, what if what you really know and sense and see isn't what it physically appears to be? What if all that was real was you and me and our psychic perceptions? Until next time. Hi, I'm Lydney Burns. I could kick myself. Great, and follow your dreams. I've got the power! Halloween is coming, and Hollywood Costumes has the Northwest's largest supply of costumes, makeup, masks, and wigs. Hollywood Costumes, stop by today before it's too late. Next, Halloween diarrhea. Okay, okay. yeah, we're seeing a lot of that on the roads out there, okay? Oh, Said yeah. it would be all over the place. Yeah. Can cause bloating, cramps, or severe diarrhea. And glow stick poisoning. For another episode of Bride's Head Revisited. At last. My dear, sweet, loving bride. My darling. Gary Coleman and Steve Allen host a Halloween classic, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Has anyone in here actually ever seen a ghost? Good evening. Welcome to Universal Studios, where you learn Hollywood secrets. And now you'll learn the secrets of the six million dollar man and the bionic woman on the Universal Studios tour. Friday. The world's first rock and roll Dracula movie. The son of Dracula is Nielsen at his hottest. Ringo at his magical magnificence. Para at its funniest. <laughs> Son of Dracula, rated PG. is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. This is BBC Two. Programs for St. Frankenstein's Day on BBC Two. Begin at 4.35 with Watch the Dot. How do you do? May I help you? I would like to look at some shoes. Sit here, please. Thank you. Would you like to look at some shoes? Yes, please. For your little girl? What size does she wear? I wear size six. No, dear, I think you wear a five and a half. Well, let me measure. Yes, that's right. She should wear a size five and a half. What kind of shoes do you want? I want white shoes. Are you sure you want white shoes, Barbara? Yes, Mother. Look at some brown ones. Oh, no, I don't like brown. Mary has white shoes. I want shoes like hers. Well, I will get some brown shoes and some brown shoes. Then you can try both pairs of shoes. Look at these, Mother. I like these shoes, Mother. These are sandals, Barbara. 
You can't wear sandals to school. Why, Mother? Well, don't you see? They don't cover your foot. They're open all around. And they have a low, flat heel. They have straps, don't you see? May I try them on, Mother? Oh, no. They are for a bigger girl than you. They are not your size. I'm sorry, I don't have white shoes in size five and a half, but we have brown shoes and these brown shoes. Would you like to try these? I want white shoes, Mother. But we have brown shoes. Let's try these and see how they fit. For your little girl? There. Stand up and see how it feels. It doesn't feel good, Mother. Walk around and see how it feels. They look nice. It doesn't feel good. It hurts my foot. Do you have sandals? You can't wear sandals to school. I can show you shoes with straps. She can wear these to school. Thank you. May we see them? Are they sandals, Mother? No, dear. They are shoes. Wait, you will see them. I have two pairs. One pair with two straps and the other pair with two straps. Let me try the one with the one strap, Mother. These are pretty shoes. And they're good shoes for school, too. How much do they cost? They cost six dollars. Do these brown shoes cost six dollars? No, they cost four dollars and ninety-nine cents. How do they feel, Barbara? It fits her foot well. See how well it fits her foot around the heel? Do you like these shoes, Barbara? I don't know. They look funny, Mother. What do you mean, dear? I don't know. Just funny, Mother. Could I have some high heels, Mother? Oh, no, dear. They are not for little girls. I'm not a little girl, Mother. I'm nine years old. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Barbara. Are you getting some new shoes? Yes. Mr. Baker, my mother asked me to bring these shoes back to you. Thank you, Mary. Which pair of shoes did your mother keep for you? We like the brown shoes because they are best for school. Oh, then you're returning the white shoes. Yes, yes here they are. Here they... Thank you. Are you going to wear your new shoes, shoes to school tomorrow, Barbara? Barbara? Yes, are you going to wear yours? I think so. I think. See you at school tomorrow. Goodbye, Barbara. Goodbye, Barbara. Goodbye, Barbara. Goodbye Mary. Let me try on the brown shoes again, Mother. How do they feel, Barbara? They feel wonderful. Do they hurt your feet? Oh, no. I like these shoes. They're better for school. Do you want to wear them home, Barbara? Yes, Mother. Are they $4.99? Yes, $4.99 and 20 cents tax. That's $5.19. $5. $5.19. $5. Thank you. Here are her old shoes. Thank you. Oh, Mother, I like these brown shoes. Bye. Goodbye. Good mother. Goodbye, Barbara. Halloween. Bats, black cats, witches, and vampires. A night in which ghosts play tricks on humans. 
All of the spirits of Halloween are on the loose tonight. This scary gang of ghouls and goblins featuring Nancy Kerrigan welcome you to their nightmare in Halloween on Ice. With interesting choreography. Relax. Great choreography and very appropriate. How about a little joker? Nancy Kerrigan. Restless isn't the word as these demons on ice begin to surround Nancy. Get out of there, Nancy Kerrigan, as she's attacked. Nothing beats a great place. Hello, I'm B.D. Hyman. Thank you for joining me. And these demons are real. They run about the earth. And they are the ones that implement all of Satan's attacks and plans. Every form of, of um, emotional and mental problem and many diseases which are caused by demonic presence. All addictions, all bondages, alcoholism, drug addiction, all of these things have a root. Even homosexuality, that's not just a natural state. That is a demonic stronghold in someone's life. And once they're separated, if you're listening to this and you're dealing with homosexuality, that is a demon. For instance, autism. There are many of you out there who have or know of someone who has an autistic child. That's a demon. This is why we have to understand the nature of demons. We can't just dismiss it. My God, she's scummy. Green with envy. I had a dream, or was it real? We crossed the line, and it was on. We crossed the line, it was on this time. I've been denying how I feel, you've been denying what you want. You want the me, talk to me, baby. I want some satisfaction, take me to the stars, just like, oh. Take me in your arms and 